Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the PG Electroplast Limited Q4 FY22 conference call hosted by Philip Capital India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. During this call, company may make certain, uh, certain forward-looking statements based on the current held beliefs of the management of the company, which are expressed in good faith and in management's opinion are reasonable. The forward-looking statements may involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors which may cause the actual results, financial condition performance, or achievements of the company or industry to differ mat materially from those in forward-looking statements. These forward-looking statements represent only the company's current intentions, beliefs, and expectations. And any forward-looking statement speaks only as of the date on which it was made. The company assumes no obligation to revise or update any forward-looking statements. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Deepak Agarwal from Philip Capital, India, Private Limited. Thank you, and over to you. Uh, thanks, uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, on behalf of Philip Capital, I welcome you to PG Electroplast Limited Q4 FY22 earning call. Uh, today we have with us uh, management represented by Mr. Vishal Gupta, Managing Director Finance, Mr. Vikas Gupta, Managing Director Operations, and Mr. Pramod Gupta, Chief Financial Officers. Without taking much of time, I would like to hand over the floor to the management for their opening remarks, post which will be open the floor for Q&A. Many thanks. Open to you, sir. Thank you, Deepak, and thank you, complete Philip Capital team. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for sparing your valuable time and joining this call today. Hope all of you are doing great. I'm joined in this call by Mr. Pramod Gupta, our Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Vikas Gupta, our Managing Director of Operations. We have, we have already shared our results presentation earlier, and hope you must have gone through that. FY22 has been a significant landmark year in the PG Group journey. We have crossed 1,000 crores in revenue. We raised growth capital and the mainstay of our growth strategy. Our products business has delivered fantastic growth of 146% for the year FY22. Early in the year, we have doubled our washing machine capacity and have launched the fully automatic washing machine platforms and also the business was shifted from Noida to Roti. And I am very happy to share that washing machine business grew 119% for full year. For the AC business, we applied and got approved for the Government of India's PLI scheme, and I have taken fourth largest investment in AC components PLI through our 100% subsidy PG Technoplast Trial Limited. We have built and commissioned a world-class RAC component and RAC assembly unit in Supa, Maharashtra. The project was completed in a record time of 165 days and is the first greenfield plant to begin operations under the PLI scheme. It has the largest capacity for manufacturing air conditioners in Western India. The plant is also one of the most backward integrated AC manufacturing unit in India today with in-house manufacturing of plastic molded components, painted and unpainted sheet metal components, heat exchangers for indoor units, heat exchangers for outdoor units, integrated copper tubing shop and cross flow frame manufacturing. For PG Group, AC products business grew 185% for FI22. During the year, our R&D developed, validated, and launched successfully new ODM platforms and products for washing machines, room ACs, and air coolers. And all the products have had very good response from the market and our clients. Coming to future plans now, we see very strong demand for our products, and we are preparing ourselves for very strong ramp up in our product businesses again in FY23. Post this 146% growth in product business in FY22, we are again budgeting 120% growth in FY22 in FY23 for our products business. Overall guidance is given in the release, and we are confident of scaling all our businesses significantly in FY23. In FY23, we will be again taking a big capacity expansion in our products business. We are almost doubling our washing machine capacity again, and we are further expanding our RAC capacity to 200,000 indoor units 
and 100,000 outdoor units on a monthly basis. Along with, we are going for further backward integration by adding a manufacturing facility for making RAP controllers in our super unit. With this now, I will hand over the call to my colleague, Mr. Pramod Gupta, our CFO, to elaborate on the financials. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'm sure uh, all of you have seen our financials and details already. Uh, we have had a great year uh, from operations point of view. Uh, despite all the challenges and cost pressures, we have largely held our operating margins in FY22, uh, despite the fact that we had several one-off costs throughout the year. In the first three quarters, we had cost impact due to fundraising costs, product testing, validation, and sampling costs, and few other one-offs. In fourth quarter also, we have taken a non-cash charge of 2.07 crores on account of ESOPs and 50 lakh rupees for warranties. Uh, although uh, in the fourth quarter, we had a higher proportion of uh, contribution from TV business uh, to almost 9% of sales versus 3% uh, 4% in the third quarter, yet we had seen a margin improvement of 85 basis points quarter on quarter at the operating level. Uh, for the next year, we are expecting uh, improvement in margins across all the businesses due to scale-up and operating leverage. But due to the fact that we will be probably seeing a much higher growth in the TV assembly business, overall reported margin guidance shows a small improvement. Uh, this is all from my side, and I'll open the, question, the floor for question answer now. And... Uh, <coughs> Uh, will be uh, ready to uh, or happy to help you in any other clarifications which you have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use uh, to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Abhishek Maheshwari from Sky Ridge Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and many congratulations for the wonderful set of numbers. Uh, so just wanted to talk about the capacity utilizations, uh, especially now that uh, the summer is over. How are we doing in AC and washing machines now? Sir, our uh, AC business will uh, see what we is happening right now. As you have rightly said, the AC season is getting over. But we have made uh, tie-ups with one or two big customers and brands. And hopefully, we will be ramping up again our production in AC by month of August. So our washing machine, uh, typically, it's a season time. So washing machine ramp-up is happening. From July onwards, we are seeing a big growth in washing machine numbers also. So overall, we will see a good uh, bump up in our numbers in Q2 also, sir. Uh, that is what we are hoping for. The numbers are looking good. Yes, it's, AC is a seasonal business, and it is as expected. The numbers will go down for Q2, uh, but it will not be as compared to the last year. The numbers will be significantly better than what we did in last year. Oh, understandable, sir. And sir, secondly, uh, you have recently commenced your, uh, commissioned your uh, AC facilities and you know TV facilities and all. So, are you at optimum utilize? When can you expect to reach optimum utilization levels where we can, uh, you know, uh, cover our fixed and variable costs and deliver a good margin there? Obviously, this business, whether we like it or not, some of the businesses, if we see in the categories we are in, product business. Air cooler is a very seasonal business. 
uh, AC is little lesser than air cooler and washing machine is still better than all the three categories and LED TV also is equivalent to as a washing machine business. But there is a seasonality in the business. That is the uh, uh, nature of this business. But as a company, we already have those things in place, those systems or those measures in place in order to control our costs whenever there is a lean time or lean season is going on. Having said that, as you know, the company is in a, a, a growth uh, phase and we are growing uh, in a very fast way for last two years. So, you know, as of now, we don't see much challenges in meeting our fixed or variable cost. Going forward, when the business will stabilize, but we don't see another two years, I think we will be in a very rapid growth phase. So overall, we are seeing a growth. So right now, that fixed cost and variable cost is not a major challenge as of now. Okay, great, sir. Good to know. And said, lastly, any comments on uh, input cost pressures and supply chain issues? Uh, input cost in last, uh, if you see, uh, Jan March quarter and December quarter, there was increase in commodity prices and there was a lag in passing on that increase to our customers. But going forward, what we see, there will be easing out in commodities and that we are already seeing. So... Uh, if there is a in OEM business, so there are two categories of business, OEM and ODM. In OEM business, we are able to pass through a monthly basis to our customers. But in ODM business, there is always a lag in pass through, whether it's an increase or it's a decrease. It is always like that. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'll get back to the queue. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Pulkit Singhal from Dalmas Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, congrats on a good set of numbers and an excellent guidance. We're just trying to understand things uh, on the working capital side because last three years our working capital seems to be going up. Uh, receivable days are up from 50 to 60 days. Um, inventory days of sales are also up from 45 to 60 days. So if you can help us understand the reasons and also what how we should look at these two line items for the future. So, Madhu, you will take this or I shall yeah, take, take it? Don't worry. So, see, what has happened is, uh, in our case, because this was our first year uh, in the AC business, AC uh, ODM solution business, and uh, we were uh, therefore taking a lot of care uh, so that we can actually meet this uh, business without much difficulty. So we had an uh, increase in the inventory uh, in this year. And uh, as far as receivables and, uh, are concerned, if you will see, uh, typically what happens in our business is that always the fourth quarter is a very large quarter. So in, the, in this year also, for the first three quarters, our turnover was 600 crores almost, and in the fourth quarter, we did about 500 crores. So uh, the, the optically, the number looks very high in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the, the receivable days because the billing actually happens in the last three months at a very high rate. Now this is going to get uh, slightly better in coming years as the, the business uh, more uh, balanced and over the next couple of years we see a slightly uh, more balanced growth over the full uh, or more balanced revenues over the full year. So this uh, receivable days will start coming down. Coming to the uh, inventory side, I think uh, from this year onwards, the inventory days will look less lesser because of a couple of reasons. One or two of them are structural and another are internal to do our things also. Uh, see, uh, right now we have to carry a lot of inventory in AC business because Chinese New Year typically comes in between uh, <clears throat> the third quarter, fourth quarter, which is basically typically February, uh, January, February, uh, sometimes in that time, uh, the, the Chinese New Year happens. And that time, the shipments from China are delayed invariably, and they are not uh, coming. They are not uh, shipping the goods or, or draw material from there. So you typically have to keep slightly higher inventory. 
Now, as and when uh, the the ecosystem is getting developed in India, because this PLI is for components, and more and more components are built uh, in China from in India, and that import dependence on China reduces, we will probably be seeing uh, lesser, much lesser requirement to keep the high imported inventory that we are keeping today. Secondly, uh, as our business, uh, we, I, I said, like, we had a huge ramp up in this year, in the months of February, March, April, so we kept this. Next year, this uh, this is not going to be there for sure, and therefore, the inventory levels are going to remain uh, lower, or inventory days will look at least lower. So that is my uh, submission, and uh, we can uh, assure you uh, that we are actually all the time very consciously working uh, towards uh, having a better capital utilization and we are a capital uh, short company and, and uh, we have a debt so we are actually always very conscious uh, of uh, keeping the inventories at our end uh, especially given the kind of high raw material prices right now are going on right so the cash conversion cycle is around 33 days of sales so as your product business goes higher and that is the one that is going fastest uh, does that have a higher working capital intensity in the overall business or the lower one? It has slightly higher working capital intensity, but this working capital intensity will continue to improve over the years as the ecosystem for the components in India starts developing. Today, the okay. basic problem is that we are importing a lot of components still from China. Now, as and when this dependence keeps on coming down, the number of inventory or the amount of inventory that you need to keep will keep on coming down. Okay. And in terms of your net debt targets, I mean, this is the first year I think your net debt has crossed equity. So it's so more than one times equity is around 350 crores on. How do you look at internally when you're deciding for growth that you will, you know, what is the limit that you will not cross yeah. in terms of whether it's net debt to EBITDA or net debt to equity? How do you look at things? No, net debt to equity, we don't want to cross one, but this year uh, what has happened is uh, our plant uh, got commissioned in the fourth quarter sure. only, yes. and uh, because of that, all the debt uh, has actually come in this year in the balance sheet, while the plant has actually contributed only for one quarter. So yeah. profitability and uh, those numbers are looking slightly higher, and we are carrying slightly higher inventory also because the fourth quarter uh, was the AC season this year, and we were very cautious that we didn't want to miss the any uh, we didn't want to take any chances basically. Now um, yeah. going forward, this will all improve, and uh, we think that uh, debt to EBITDA ratios as well as uh, debt to equity ratios will uh, come down. So will it become below one in um, next year, or will it take slightly longer to come below one than that to twenty? Uh, it it should be uh, uh, around one. I don't exactly know how the situation will turn out in the fourth quarter, but we will try to uh, we will target to keep it below one. Uh, that is our uh, internal target uh, to always have uh, debt to equity ratio of less than one. Understood. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ashish Kumar Singh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir, and congratulations for the results. Uh, my questions were on the uh, CAPEX that you announced last uh, week on the Maharashtra uh, plant. So I wanted to know about the timeline and how the CAPEX uh, will be funded there. Um, sure. So uh, this capex is actually the same capex uh, which we are taking for the PLI, and it is also the same capex which we are already part of which we have already undertaken in the the facility. It's just that the announcement uh, was made uh, during the event in Davos by the government of okay. Russia, but. Um, yeah, uh, Large part of that capex is uh, already underway in the sense that this year and next year, by next year, uh, significant portion of this capex will be covered. Okay, and uh, how is that been funded? I know.
then you will get around 77% 78% of the around 8 around 66% sorry out of 300 crores you will get roughly 200 crores back as an incentive from the government okay got it and this will be purely on the ac component side right yeah, this is to, on the AC component side, as I have said earlier, but if you are not able to achieve, some portion of that can be covered under non-AC. So largely you will get this benefit on your total investment of 200 crores, you will get 200 crores from the government of India. Got it, got it, got it. And currently what we are supplying in terms of TVs and AC, what will be the mix in, in terms of ODM and OEM? In case of AC, uh, it's, I think 75% of uh, uh, top line comes from ODM business. In case of washing machine, it is 100% ODM. In case of LED TV, it is largely OEM. And uh, in case of air cooler, it is 100% ODM. Okay, okay, so we are largely an ODM company. Got it, got it. Yeah. And currently, currently, we will be reinvesting a lot of capital, right? In terms of PLI scheme, working capital and scale up in other businesses, what kind of capital the company will be requiring? Because we already uh, probably uh, more, that is already more than uh, one X of our equity. So we probably need to work capital raise or how, what kind of capital requirements a company would need? So for this year, FY23, we have already made a, a plan for 130, 140 crores of paper. And we will be doing a, taking a small debt, not a very big number of uh, a big figure of debt, and the rest of it will be managed through our internal accruals. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as capital raise is there, we don't have any plans as of now to do that. But we are uh, going to take a shareholder approval enabling, but not no nothing for immediate next three four months. We don't have any plan. Got it, got it, got it. And what would be a client concentration currently? Uh, for AC washing machine business, we have a very widespread uh, customer base. So there is no customer who is more than 15 or 20 percent of the total of our uh, business of that product category. In air cooler, right now we have uh, one customer only, uh, Godric, and we are doing decent business with them. And for LED TV, uh, we have two, uh, two or three customers right now. And we are in the process of adding one or two more customers. And we uh, right now, AC and washing machine, we have a decent widespread customer base. But air cooler and LED TVs categories are also small, and we are trying to build on those categories and add more customers uh, due course of time. Got it, got it, got it. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Amit Agarwal from Berman Capital Management, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, first, sir, if it's possible, can you uh, give a breakup of uh, revenue in terms of AC, washing machine, and air cooler within the product division for the quarter and for the full year? Can you give that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll just give that. Just give me a second, sir. I'm just opening. Sure. So, um, Uh, we had totally in the product business 478 crores uh, turnover this year, out of which uh, 296, uh, 297 crores was actually AC, washing machine was 167, and coolers were 14, point, uh, 14 crores. Okay. And for the quarter, uh, the AC business was 200 crores, uh, and washing machine was 50 crores, and about uh, 9 crores was coolers. Got it, sir. And uh, sir, also in terms of margins, uh, can we have a broader split in terms of division-wise margin for the in quarter and the full year? Uh, uh, and uh, we don't intend to share that number, but I can just briefly give you a little bit of color that in the product business, uh, uh, the margins are on a normalized basis at the operating level are about seven to eight percent, and uh, in the Plastic molding business, they are about six to seven percent. Six to seven percent. Got it, sir. And uh, sir, in terms of our, uh, uh, so when you said eighty-four crore is a base uh, that we had in FY20, is this related to the plastic component business that we had? Yeah, that was related largely and only to the plastic component uh, and 
little bit of i think uh, heat exchanger we must be doing that time so it was largely plastic only okay and when we say 290 crore of ac revenue this year this is complete built unit there will be over and above there would be some component revenue which would be booked in plastic only uh, regarding ac yeah yes uh, so yeah you're right and if uh, what would be that uh, number sir that number will be probably similar to some 60 50 60 crore that is or maybe actually around 70 80 crore because in pgtl also now we started supplying components to couple of so it will be around 80 crores maybe okay it is and sir when we look at from like say fi uh, 27 perspective and looking from an incremental sale are we uh, looking at more complete build unit or are we also looking uh, uh, you know some contribution from component by selling it to uh, the brand so uh, actually component will be always uh, contributing uh, because there are some components uh, which we are supplying to some of our customers leading customers but a large proportion almost 85 to 90% of the proportion for the pli revenues will be cover, uh, covered from the in house usage of the components uh, that we will be uh, giving in our solutions to the customers so uh, what i basically mean to say is like uh, individual component requirement from customer will be very small and large part of it is going to be through the solution uh, that we'll be giving to the customers what it and uh, sir in terms of our capacity as of 31st march 2022 uh, in terms of ac idu odu and washing machine semi automatic full fully uh, automatic what would be the number sir yeah so in uh, all plant from my yeah washing machine uh, we can do 15000 uh fully automatic washing machines uh, per month uh, and 50000 semi automatic washing machines per month right now in uh, ac in indoor we can do uh, close to 125000 indoor units every month and 50000 outdoor unit every month and we are completely backward integrated in the components which we do right now in these units uh, as of 31st for it sir and uh, sir in terms of uh, again this 290 crore uh, revenue that we booked what would you broader split it of idu and odu well, just give me a second i'll just tell you um, okay. 234 was uh, indoor unit roughly and about 63 crores was uh, outdoor unit and the last question uh, in terms of our uh, of future plans within ac they are all concentrated in maharashtra so the entire uh, future capex will happen in the same uh, super vicinity in a, in and around ahmednagar not really actually we are also having a unit uh, in pgtl which is uh, in noida greater noida we are actually going to do significant capex uh, this year there also uh, from uh, to develop some uh, component ecosystem cross flow fan uh, and uh, plastic molding we are already doing there we are contemplating internally to probably start doing uh, heat exchanger uh, also there uh, and may actually start servicing um, some idu solution from there to some of the customers that is still in the discussion stage and we will be probably taking a decision very soon on that and sir i would assume our uh, super facility would be largely catered to the west india market right no no it's nothing like that uh, uh, we cater to the brands and then brands actually sell all across india it is not that they are selling only in west some of the brands are uh, actually shipping the products uh, to north as well as south also uh, from uh, our facility but uh, sir in terms of again if you have any broader numbers of like say 290 crore sales we did you know because i am assuming you would have some visibility on where the products are getting delivered any broader sense uh, in terms of west market what would be that number see it's very difficult for us to get that because in some of the customers they take it uh, to their warehouse in the west and then from there they distribute it in only few customers uh, very few customers we actually directly ship to their warehouses in the uh, in the other part of the region so uh, getting that number or actually guessing is not right on an um, uh, very difficult task let me tell you from the feedback what we have from our customers having a plant uh, situated in maharashtra in this uh, amnagar district so we are quite equidistant for north also and south also in the east uh, side of india also so that way the kind of 
you know, uh, in touch what we are getting from our clients is on the basis of that because we are able to feed their pan-India market from our location in Maharashtra. Got it, sir. Uh, thank you so much. That uh, really helps. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Abhishek Maheshwari from Sky Ridge Wealth by Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Maheshwari, can you hear us? This is the operator, Mr. Uh, Maheshwari. Yeah, we are I'm, able audible. To I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, am I audible now? Yes, you are. Yeah, I was on mute. Uh, thank you for taking my questions again. Uh, so what uh, uh, what FA turnover and margins are you targeting for FI23? Uh, Asset turnover and margins. Yeah, uh, sorry. I got your question, but I'll tell you something. The reason I am not able to exactly pinpoint and give you the answer for that is because we are doing continuously CAPEX, and uh, how much of that CAPEX actually gets capitalized next year before uh, the balance sheet date is going to decide the um, fixed asset turn as well as the margins on that. But margins from on an overall basis, as I said, have will in, improve in the business segments. Uh, coming to the fixed asset side, um, uh, fixed asset turnover, uh, my sense is that as the businesses fully scale up, uh, the fixed asset turn for the company will significantly improve from what it is today. So currently it is at around two and a half or so, so maybe we can expect uh... Uh, it to go to three, to four to five. Yeah, four to five is uh, the internal target that we have for the next couple of years. We have to reach there uh, to to get our desired uh, uh, ratios of uh, return ratios, and we are working very hard towards it. Excellent, excellent. And sir, last question. So you, uh, so I'm sorry, I missed out the part where you were explaining your working capital cycle. So I saw the presentation you've written also that working capital increased because of you know delays in uh, uh, the plant ramp up due to fire accident. So uh, going forward as things normalize and plants stabilize, uh, the working capital loan and all should increase. Am I uh, is my assumption correct? See what is going to happen is uh, now already the working capital loan and uh, as well as the working capital. Uh, basically, the inventory is running uh, down because the season uh, has uh, been going on and the AC and we have been utilizing these raw material which we imported. This will continue like this till uh, August, September. And then from September onwards, we'll start rebuilding the base for uh, November uh, ramp up that we will have to do for the next season. So because of the seasonality in the AC business, what's going to happen is that uh, you will see the cycle uh, of the balance sheet as well as the working capital, uh, you know, being at the peak around March, and then it keeps on coming down till September, October, and then again it starts going up from October till March. So, uh, okay. but but next year uh, the numbers will be looking much better because this year we had a first half. See, there's a, there's a uh, calculation issue also because first half we had a very slow revenues uh, out of the 1,000 crores. We did only 300 crores in the first half. And because of that, uh, overall the number for the full year when you look at it at the year-end inventory and uh, divided by the full year uh, turnover and look out at the days, the days look unusually high. This year that situation is not likely and hopefully we will have much balanced year. Uh, and uh, therefore, the numbers will look better. And also, we are continuously working to optimize the inventory levels, etc. And we are doing several things on at our end so that uh, we can take care of these issues. Okay. Sir, in one broad level question, uh, considering the uh, industry that you operate in, the nature of business you are in, and the FA turnover of five to six that you are targeting. Naturally, the volumes are going to ramp up and pick up strongly in next two, three years. So yeah. obviously, the working capital cycle, working capital also requirements also increase significantly. So is there any internal target you have that you would want to maintain? And uh, are your clients, uh, are your customers compliant with those, you know, uh, 
days days receivable and days payable uh, uh, that you are internally targeting so what kind of number are you targeting there in terms of working capital days for long term perspective i'm i'm asking from long term point of view you can actually take a, a working capital cycle of about at least 45 to 60 days and that is what we should be seeing as the product business becomes larger so there are there is a mix of customers some of them pay very early some of them have a payment cycle of up to 60 days also so uh, depending upon the mix of how they grow individually the the final uh, receivable situation will actually uh, decide the working capital cycle but we are very sure that as the eco com- eco component um, ecosystem for the component in india improves lot of this dependence on inventory high cost inventory that we have to keep because we have to import these goods from china those things will continuously keep coming down over the next 3 to 4 years as the the companies ramp up their production in india for making the components some of the critical components oh. both in ac as well as washing machine okay okay so uh, the working capital days you are saying that working capital days will increase from here but they should stabilize at 40 to 45 days yes uh, is okay great sir thank you very much and all the best thank you thank you participants who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touch tone telephone we have the next question from the line of arpit cha from stallion asset please go ahead mr shah can you hear us yeah am i audible yes you are please go ahead yeah i just wanted to understand the seasonality of the business because you've just added a lot of new lines of business here so what what we are percentage of revenues which will be coming from let's say from q1 q2 q3 q4 because a q4 and a q1 we typically a heavy quarter for a company so would that mix change going ahead mm, i don't think the mix will change significantly but it will improve for sure see last two years there has been a hit uh, uh, on our business uh, in both both the years in the first quarter because of the covid led shutdown and we have a high dependence on some of the summer pro- summer products like ac and refrigerator in the in the plastic molding side and uh, they are actually uh, going next year also the ac is likely to remain very large uh, even the product side for us so that seasonality will continue but from today 30 70 in the first half of the calendar which we have been doing for the last 2 3 years uh, will probably shift and improve to 40 60 kind of a number in the next couple of years so 40 would be the first half and 60 i don't get in the last no no first half is like first calendar half will be 60% which is january to uh, june and then in the two month uh, two quarters which is uh, uh, september and december quarter that will be 40% got 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 and, and uh, largely we have got an odm side of the business right we it rse washing machine uh, uh, and even an air cooler yeah. how would you be how would you be able to uh, manage margin because here you will not have a complete cost right there would be a lag of let's say one or two months or maybe a quarter so how would you be maintaining the margins over here given the inflation scenario yeah yeah so typically the the way we do our pricing of the product is uh, lagged uh, on a lag two month basis average we try to uh, do the pricing and we have a pricing contract um, where we try to uh, change the price every two to three months depending on the contract we have with the clients and we try to preserve the margins in the business and we hope that uh, we will probably not be seeing uh, such a steep rise in the commodity price as we have seen in the last one and a half two years and if that is the case then uh, typically the price pass on is uh, easy uh, but if you have a very steep rise like we have seen in the last two years it takes some time but it happens eventually got got thank you so much thank you We have the next question from the line of Dhruvesh Shah from JM Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. 
Um, sir, any new customer addition uh, that you would like to highlight which are of significance uh, during the quarter in AC or washing machines? Actually, uh, we don't uh, talk about customers uh, uh, so much, but we have had significant customer addition uh, this year in all the segments even in the uh, plastic molding side and uh, even on the on the ac and washing machine ac, AC was the first year in the odm solution and in the very first year we have been able to add seven customers and we started billing all of them largely in the fourth quarter uh, similarly in the washing machines we have been adding uh, very good customers now we service almost close to 16 17 brands uh, in india uh, in washing machine and we continue to add some significant uh, names in the washing machine, uh, even in the current year. Okay. And uh, what would be our market share uh, in the outsourcing industry in AC and washing machines uh, uh, separately? That number is not formally uh, available, but uh, uh, in washing machine, I think on a monthly run rate basis, we are probably number two. And it's difficult to get that num uh, market share because there are a couple of unlisted players whose numbers are not available to us. Uh, but we do know from the customer interaction that we we are having uh, probably uh, in the number of, uh, of washing machine, second largest uh, outsourcing player, we are there on a monthly basis. In AC, uh, uh, also the same challenges is there, but uh, in AC, our work market share will be very small because is still uh, one of the large player con controls very very high market share uh, uh, in the AC outsourcing industry. Okay, and uh, any shortages that you are facing in terms of uh, raw materials or uh, any other uh, uh, problems that you are facing while uh, manufacturing uh, uh, in RAC or washing machines? Uh, no, nothing uh, very substantial as of now. Uh, only issue is like uh, whenever you start a new facility and you have very big ambitions in terms of uh, ramping the plants, uh, the, the the challenges, uh, significant challenges come on account of manpower availability, raw material um, systems, and those kind of things we are taking care. Now with the season has passed and we think we have done a good job, a reasonably good job in the season. Next season will be probably much smoother and uh, much better uh, in terms of ramp-ups and uh, delivery. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Philip Capital for closing comments. And, uh, and uh, uh, thanks everyone for participating this call. Uh, management, you would like to make any closing remarks? Thanks. So, see, the company has been aggressively doing CapEx and trying to expand their capabilities also and the capacities also. And with the government support of Make in India, Atman Nirgu Bharat, and PLI schemes, and all kind of uh, tariff and non-tariff barriers what government is trying to create for imports, a reduction in India, and uh, create self-reliant India. So we are seeing a lot of, you know, growth potential, and uh, uh, there is a good size of the market which we can cater to, and we are seeing good numbers to come in next few years. So things are looking very exciting and good. And as a team, we are trying to work hard. And in fact, the challenge is, is that we have to make this growth sustainable and that we do understand internally. And the management is doing a lot of discussions on that to how to, you know, grow on a sustainable manner, in a sustainable manner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. On behalf of Philip Capital India Private Limited, that concludes the conference call. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your